When someone signs up for your email list, it's a good idea to send them a welcome email series, introducing them to your brand and letting them know how you're able to help them. But how do you do that in an automated way? In this video, I'll show you how to use one of ConvertKit's automation templates to set up a welcome email sequence. I'll show you how you can get people into that sequence, and I'll share a resource that can help you through the process of writing your emails so that you can take that huge amount of ideas that you have and whittle that down into a really clean, effective welcome sequence. Let's get started. Okay, you can see that I'm over here in ConvertKit. I'm in the automation section, and I got here by clicking on automations in that blue bar at the top. And you can see I don't have any automation set up yet. Let's go ahead and start one by clicking on the new automation button. Okay, so when we create a new automation, here is what we see. There's a few things I want to show you before we start using that template. First of all, in the upper left here, you have the ability to change the automation's name. Now, when you use a template, that is going to overwrite any changes that you make here. So I'm not going to go ahead and edit this now. But if you wanted to edit the name of your automation, just click this pencil and you can change the name here. We have two buttons in the middle for getting started building our automation. The first is to browse templates, and that's what we will do in this video. You also have the option to just hit create automation and start building from scratch. In subsequent videos, I will show you how to create automations from scratch. The last thing that I want to call out is over here on the right hand side. We have a few different things here. Total subscribers. So once the automation is live, this will show you how many subscribers have gone through your automation. Now, if you send a whole bunch of subscribers through all at once, this number takes a little while to update. Um, and so you might have a whole bunch of subscribers go through and it will still say zero for a while. It can take a couple of hours before that number updates. Um, this button here allows you to send a copy of your automation elsewhere. We don't need to worry about that, but this, this is very important. Right now, the automation is paused. And after you're done building your automation, you need to be sure to come back here and flip that switch to turn on the automation. Otherwise, it's just going to sit here and nothing is going to happen. So when you're all done building your automation, don't forget to come back here and turn it on. Okay, so let's take a look at those templates. So let's click on browse templates and we've got a bunch of different templates here. These are all common scenarios that you might want to set up an automated sequence inside of ConvertKit, different sort of activities where you need to send emails and apply tags and things like that. Now, when you use one of these templates, sort of based on the recipe that's there, ConvertKit might copy in a few different things. You might see tags getting added to your system, forms, landing pages, and email sequences. Those all may get added into your, um, into your ConvertKit setup sort of based on what you choose. Let's go with the simplest recipe here. That's the Evergreen Newsletter. And ConvertKit will copy that automation in. Okay, so we've copied our automation in and you can see four different elements on the page. Let me describe those to you briefly. So across the top, we have the three different ways to get into this automation. Now with ConvertKit automations, you need at least one way in and you can have up to five. This template has given us three different ways in as an example. You can keep all three or you can delete two of them and just use one. That part is up to you and I will go into more depth about the differences between forms, landing pages, and tags as a link trigger later on. For now, just know these are your three ways in, and if you want to um, edit those ways in, just click, and an editor will open up, make your changes. Be sure to hit save before you leave that section. The thing we want to focus on is the actual email sequence itself. So let's click on this and we can edit this sequence inside of here. So as you can see here, ConvertKit has very helpfully provided us with a shell of four different emails and they've given us some advice on what to write about. In this first email, they've given us a lot of suggestions and then in subsequent emails, if you click on it, you can see their suggestions are just in the subject line. 
So when it comes to a welcome email sequence, uh, there's three common questions that people have. Number one, how many emails do I need? Number two, how often should I send emails? And number three, what should I write about? So let's take each of those questions. The first two questions are kind of linked. So how many emails do I need and how often should I send emails? The thing that you are trying to weigh here is you want to send people emails often enough that they remember you, but not so often that they are annoyed by you and unsubscribe. And that balance can be a little hard to strike. I would suggest that initially you send a few emails um, sort of right away. So say in the first week that somebody has subscribed to you, you want to send at least two emails. That helps them remember who you are. And after that point, you may want to slow down the pacing of your email, say to um, once a week, maybe twice a week. So if you sent, say, like in, in one email for the first three days, then maybe you would slow down and send two emails in a week. Um, I personally kind of like one email a week. You're going to experiment with these things and over time you'll learn what works for you. I would not suggest slowing your pacing down so much that say you only send one email a month. In that period of time, people are likely to sort of forget about you. And so when that email then arrives, they're going to say, who is this person? I don't want email from them, I'm going to unsubscribe, or even worse, I'm going to report it as spam. Okay, so the way that you set your pacing here is the first email by default is gonna happen immediately, and you can edit that, but the way that you do immediately in ConvertKit is you just say zero days, and then ConvertKit translates that into immediately. You'll see that you can also adjust the day of the week. There may be reasons that you would like to do that. Um, I know one um, member of SPI Pro whose business is about managing screen time, and she recommends that people take a tech Sabbath on Sunday, don't touch their devices on Sunday. So she never sends emails on Sunday because that would be hypocritical to sort of her business message. So you can think about those things, but most people are going to keep it all days checked. Then in subsequent emails, the way that ConvertKit sort of keeps track of time is they say, when do I send this based on the last email? So I'm gonna send this email after, send this email one day after the last email. And so that's sort of how they mark time. And then when I go to this, it'll say, send this email one day after the last email, which in this case would be the second email. And you're gonna adjust your pacing like that. So let's say that you've decided, I wanna send um, my subscribers one email a day for three days, and then after that, I'm going to switch to weekly. So here you can see we've got it set. So this fourth email now goes to after seven days. And when I click add an email to add the next email, I will be sure to set this to after seven days. So for the purpose of the rest of this video, I'm going to assume that you've written emails inside of ConvertKit before and you know how to edit all of the content. If not, we'll have other videos on how to do that. I just want to call out the things that are specific to sequences inside of the editor here. We've already taken a look at how you set the pacing of your emails and how you can exclude specific days of the week, that sort of thing. Let's take a look at this little funnel here. What this allows you to do is exclude subscribers from individual emails inside of the sequence. Now, why would you want to do that? Let's say in this welcome sequence, you're giving people a general like introduction um, to you and your brand. You're telling people maybe about some resources you have available. And then in the third email, you are going to pitch a product. Now, some people may have found you through purchasing that product. And so in that case, you might not want to pitch to them a product that they already own. How do I exclude them? I will click on this funnel here and you've got a lot of different options. Um, I'm just going to go to any and I will under subscribed is where I can find the tags and I am going to exclude my customer tag. And when I do that, 
Now, anybody who has already purchased my product and I've tagged as a customer will not get this one email from the sequence. And we can tell that there is a filtering active because now this little funnel is red. So you can see here that it's grayed out. That means there's no funneling happening, but when I come here, it's red. Okay, but what if for some reason I wanted to exclude some somebody. I want to exclude my customers from this whole entire sequence. How do I do that? You can achieve that either in your automation or in settings. You can go to your settings and that will open up in another tab. And from here you have the same option to exclude subscribers. And so I could come in here and instead I could check my customer tag. Just be sure to hit update sequence. Okay, so back to this. The other thing that I need you to know is that you need to publish your, your emails. And to publish your emails, you just push this little button here. And when you do, the word draft will disappear from your outline on the left. Now, I haven't edited the content sufficiently in these emails for ConvertKit to allow me to publish the emails. They're very good um, at making sure you don't accidentally send their placeholder text. So let me show you an active sequence. This is a sequence I already have written and have activated, and you can see that the word draft has been removed from the outline, as well as the publish switch is now lit up green. Okay. So now you know all of the settings that are specific to sequence emails and you know how to adjust the timing, but how many emails do you need to get started? I would recommend getting a month's worth of emails in the hopper before you activate the sequence. So if we followed the pacing from my example, that would be three emails for the first week and then three subsequent follow-up emails. That should get you about a month's worth of content. So that's six emails. You can absolutely adjust that pacing. I would say do at least four emails in your first month. So this brings us to the final and most important question, which is what do I write about? For your first email, ConvertKit has some really great advice here. So go to this first email and walk through the exercise that they've built out here. They are taking you through the process of talking about your business from the standpoint of how you are here to serve your audience. And so follow this writing prompt and that will give you a really great first email. After that, what do you write about? And we've got a really great free resource for that called the Email Marketing Cheat Sheet. The Email Marketing Cheat Sheet gives you a framework for how to write your emails so that they can both help your audience and give them actionable tips, things that they can do to make their lives better, and it can assist you in achieving your goals for that email, whether it's to teach your audience um, more about who you are, to learn more about your audience so that you can serve them better in the future, or to introduce them to, say, a product or a resource that you have available for them. In the email marketing cheat sheet, you learn about 10 different types of emails. We've given them all fun different names from the tip of the iceberg to do you know the answer. So to get that download, click the link below. I hope this video was helpful in getting you started with building your welcome email sequence. In subsequent videos, I am going to show you how to adjust the other elements of that automation. You'll find the link to those below as well.